this season. All right, y'all, we're live on Facebook. We're live. <laughs> that air feel good. The breeze. Mm -hmm. <coughs> yeah. So, hey, y'all, welcome in. Come on in. Oh, what was that? It scared me. And she put 
me. Me. I am the boss of their relationship. No. <laughs> <laughs>
Korea said. Yeah, that's she said construction. Yeah. It's the fact that I just said he showed the board. Yeah. I was like, he built it with his bare hands. If y'all can see this, okay, for the full, mm-hmm. uh, what's this called? Man cave. Man yeah. cave. Mm-hmm. Slash bar. Yes. Slash white pad out. You feel that's a podcast studio? I feel so shit. That's not big enough for a podcast. It's like this size. Do you see my shit? He's talking about. <laughs> he said so it's shit. <laughs> what? It gotta be this size. Yeah. Well, of course I can. Take more you want that now, Okay. Ooh, that would be so nice. <laughs> and this is why he's everybody's husband. <laughs> oh, you know what? That's true. I need to start saying no. <laughs> I think she can be enjoying sometimes. She's like, you asked him to do what? Like, sorry, you set up, friend. <laughs> yeah. That's why I made sure to include you in this conversation because I really could have just texted him and we probably would have got the answer faster. But I was like, probably so. Because he, he didn't answer me for like two weeks straight. Yeah, because y'all was supposed to be on earlier and she was like, he ignored me for two weeks. And then, <laughs> then he said, yeah, right away this time. It was like really weird. <laughs> Stop asking. <laughs> I'm like, but he said, yeah, he I already agreed. Yeah. Months ago. I said, yeah, but he was, he was a little Ooh, vulnerable because he was drunk. Out. You did. Well, you know, yeah. like, yeah. Remember when he was on the beach? beach? He was drunk. I was drinking a lot. Oh, <laughs> I said, he was vulnerable. He was right. He was talking, talking. <laughs> and they were like, oh, you saying so much. We want you on the show. And he was like, yeah, I come on the show. Like, you were with it. I ain't gonna fall asleep on the beach. Yeah, definitely. That was a good time. That's great. <laughs> <He's too dry. laughs> All right, Corianne. What would you say? No, what would Henry say irritates them the most about you? Mm-hmm. Huh? <laughs> what would all of you just say? Because I think this, that's why I was thinking that. Okay. What would Henry say? He, uh, this is the same question. Don't right? ask it again. Just go to another one. No, that you do. What is one thing your partner does that you love? That right, but that she loves. Yes, yeah. right. You said it the opposite way though the first time. So she wrote down what he does that she loves. You right. said that you what is one th- what that is she one does. That... Anyway. Okay. I got you. <laughs> this question confuses me every time. I think I get confused in who has to guess and who the question is for every time. I 
that was three years. Okay. You remember the beach now? That's it. Wow. <laughs> well, at least Same you back. remember. I remember we was talking, talking about how I know uh, when somebody ain't gonna work out. Yeah. <laughs> That's our next month, uh, career podcast. Okay. What is? Amy, she got a guess. Okay. What is your? What is? Your go. What is your partner's go to after a long day? So what is? Got his, it. No, what's her go? You asking him the question. So ask. Just ask the question. What is your partner's go to after a long day? So she got to guess what he thinks. What he is going to say your go to is. My go to is. Mm-hmm. No. It's I thought your, it was what the his question go-to is. is. What is your partner's go to at the end of the day? That's the question for you. Right. No. So she got to guess what I'm saying. You guess what right, her, yeah. but the question is directed towards her. So you're in, but you're answering it. <laughs> okay, just do it. Okay, good. Just do it. So what does she like to do or what do I like to do? I what does she like to do? What does she like to do? I what do I like to do? Yeah. I really think this supposed to be what he's supposed to do. I think so too, but you just got the last two questions. I did. It just depends on how she answers. how she asked me. Um, Y'all can do it the other way down. What is his go-to at the end of the day? I know what his go-to is. Right, what's, what's his go-to? Is that how you spell that? <laughs> no. I don't know. All these degrees, that's what my pastor be saying. All these degrees. And y'all don't know how to do it. Where as in place? You know what I'm saying? What? No, just like what is it? Like, what is it? No. After a long day, what do you like to do? Well, I don't for real. What's I don't know. After a long day. Just writing. I think the first time was correct. Something. All right. <laughs> okay, what's your answer? Karen? What did you write? What? Girl, what you write? <laughs> what did you write? Alcohol. Being alone on TikTok. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good one. Yeah, he, he TikTok fanatic. <laughs> I don't know why you always say. How many was that? I, okay. Oh. You know, I'm not going to be talking about that. Like,
Yeah. So we met in 2000. Because I knew you prior to basic pregnant. 24 years. 24 years. So 2000. Jesus, you're old. <laughs> Jesus. Wow. So the question was, have y'all had to make adjustments in y'all marriage? So the answer would be yes. Like we, as you see, we grew up together. So, you know, what we were at 15, 16 years old is not what we at 30 somethings. <laughs> Find out because it's just. <laughs> <laughs> what kind of investments, so, like, would y'all say y'all had to make? For me, um, a lot of adjustments that I've had to make is um, learning how to live with your schedule. Um, your schedule can be very demanding. Um, I think that's one of the biggest ones is just trying to make it work with you not being here. That's real. It is. Okay. Now he the wife. At this point. <laughs> <laughs> That's how, I just told my son that he's the baby dick mama. Because <laughs> the mic with him, he's all stressed and stuff. I'm like, he asking you to pay the phone bill. I'm like, you the baby mama at this point. We <laughs> 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 coming to get him. <laughs> <laughs> That's the same question I'm going to ask. Um, how do you communicate in your marriage and has your communication style changed through the years? I don't like to communicate. Um, <laughs> I know this funny that both y'all laugh. <laughs> um, I'm that it'll go away um, person mm. until I'm forced to and then I'll have a choice but that's how it gets through a lot of stuff is just, um, and it's just not here, you know, with a lot of things, um, sometimes I just try to let it, try not to let it bother me, and then eventually it'll get better. I am the total opposite. I want to know <laughs> what is wrong. I want to talk about it. I want to talk about it in the space. I want to talk about it right now, and he don't want to talk about it. <laughs> so how's that? How have y'all been managing that? That big, that's a big difference. It is a huge to difference to be together as long as y'all have. Yeah. So like, how have y'all made that work? Um, respective boundaries. We like. I know he don't like to talk, so when I know he's not in a place to talk about it, I don't push him in that space. But I do let him know that when he's ready to talk, we need to at least discuss it. We need to talk about it. We're gonna have to get it out some way. So even if that's text, text message initially, even if that's writing it down initially, get it out, let's start communicating, and then we'll communicate you know, differently after that initial communication. But if there's, if there's high tensions, it's usually not best to communicate right away in the first place, because mm -hmm. your perception of something may not be reality at that time. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, so it's a thing and we've managed it and we've been through counseling and we have just kind of realized each other's style. Mm -hmm. So now he knows I want to know, I want to talk about it all the time. So at times he'll come to me and say, well, I know you want to know, so here. And vice versa. I know he don't want to necessarily talk about it, but I'll just throw information out and, you know, so he can know that I want to talk about it and then later on we'll talk. You're catching. Okay. That's right. Um, I do want to say that um, the couple therapy that we did do, um, it did kind of make me open up. Um, I'm not going to say all the way um, while we away from the therapy session, but when I was there, I was talking. 
I don't know if it was because it was a mediator there. <laughs> Make you feel or, uh, you know, I know I that. get to say who right or wrong. <laughs> and I, I know that in that space, she is listening because she's not going to be able to disrupt when I'm talking because we got somebody there that's going to stop that. Yeah. Um, yeah. And that's why we encourage therapy. People can talk. Mm-hmm. It was good for us. Yeah. That's good. So y'all recommend therapy to couples? Absolutely. It's yeah. definitely a good, uh, a good thing. It, it took me a while to uh, say okay to that too. Just that why. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's because you don't really like to talk. So. I don't know. For some reason, I talked to her though. Mm-hmm. I think that's the point <laughs> of therapy. They make you feel comfortable. That's their secret weapon. That's why they do it. I think I talked too much. <laughs> and we went to a couple. We went to a couple of different therapists, and everybody was not good. But mm-hmm. we kept going until we found one that we were really comfortable with. And she was really good. We were both very comfortable with her. Um, talking to both of us, she set rules mm-hmm. um, to start. And it was just really good. And I think we both have taken lessons from that. And sometimes I believe we need to like remind each other of those lessons, but we still to this day still use a lot of the what she taught us. Okay. I actually bought some. Uh, I can't say we use them. Um, we should. And it's because more than likely because um, some of the questions that get deep that I don't want to go into, but um, some couples cards, um, just like conversation cards. starters mm-hmm. and. Um, I do have a box of them. Probably use them once, maybe twice, but I know where they at. So if you want <laughs> if to, I'll take them out. But. We should. We yeah. could do that again. Okay. Do y'all feel like, um, do you think people in relationships is okay to take, take advice from single people? No. No. Why? Y'all both <laughs> said no very quickly. So <laughs> my take on that is, I'm, I'm not going to say so much as take advice because whether someone is single or married um, they could have good advice you know it may be something that specifically they've been through not necessarily as being married Um, but what you have to realize is sometimes that single person has that single person's mindset and that mindset doesn't necessarily pertain to a married couple. So what you feel is right as a single person is not necessarily fits the same category for a married person. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And kind of to piggyback off of what he was saying, what married people go through we could hate each other tomorrow, we could fight, we kick each other out, it could be like a big blow up. But we made a commitment to be together, we made a commitment to stay together. So, because of this commitment, and because of how long we've been together and like all this stuff, I can't just say, I'm done tomorrow. Yeah. That's not a thing. And I think that single people do it all the time. And they, they promote that sort of mm-hmm. you know that mindset to say well no nah, he messed up leave him or she messed up you should go mm-hmm. and like no nah, we made a commitment like yes I'm mad and in this state I feel like that you know, you know yeah. and you may feel like that in that moment but that's not really that's not what you signed up for when you walk down the aisle that's not what you signed up for when you made the commitment to marry in the first place so you have to you know bring that back and you know, remember why you got married in the first place and remember that commitment and just know you ain't going nowhere. And just for the men out there, <laughs> I'm gonna just let you know there's no such thing as sleep on the couch. Mm-hmm. If we mad, we're gonna be mad in the bed together. I'm not sleeping on the couch. So that, I'm just saying. Well, we had another couple that they have. Um, a second, like they have another unit, so they live in a two flat. So they would, he would just go to the other apartment and sleep. Married, mm. uh, boyfriend, girl. Married, 
They newly, they newly, they're newly married though. I would say. I mean, it, it, Y'all it depends so on, initially it depends it on what works for you. Yeah. yeah. Initially, it happened. Initially, we would get mad and somebody would sleep separately, and then one day you were like, "I will never do that again." Period. <laughs> so it's a lesson that y'all learned through just ten years. So now I gotta like turn off because I ain't going nowhere. So I'm like, ugh. Because he, <laughs> he he just <laughs> I'm just back to that. And he did. Yeah, he made it clear. He was like, I'm I'm not sleeping on the couch no more. I'm done yeah. with that. And I'm like, I would never either. Exactly. <laughs> so I got a follow up question um, to what we were just discussing. So do y'all feel like married? There people in marriage sometimes can have a single mindset and then a single person can have a marriage mindset. Yes. I think that can happen. I believe that's that can. Yeah. Um I wouldn't say a lot, um, because I think that mindset comes from experience and being in that situation and someone that's not in that situation not saying that they can't think that way um, but I don't see it being uh, a lot of people that that single that has that married person mindset unless maybe they was married before and then got a divorce and now single um, but I just think that comes with experience of being in that position mm -hmm. but you think married people can have a single mindset no, because if you as a married person has a single person's mindset, then if that person that you're married to don't say nothing about that, then that's a problem in itself. Yeah. Yeah, I'm just saying it can happen. Yeah. yeah. Somebody, because I think about, yeah. Anything is possible. Exactly. Right? Like people that are married and they still want to be out in the streets mm -hmm. or they don't know how to support their person. Like, you know, different things like that. Because I think a lot of things, when it comes to marriage, and obviously I'm speaking as a single person, but just like just through my journey and through my growth, like I can see the difference in my mindset. Like before, like I was that single friend that's like, girl, why you in that? Like, if you're not happy, then move around. But now I'm just like seeing the value and seeing things through and actually growing with the person. You know, like, and, um, and I've had people tell me that I have a, more of a, a marriage mindset now you know like they can see me like okay like you, you can tell that you're headed in the direction of being a wife you know so but i've seen people in in marriages just like like i said like they just don't know how to support their spouse or they just like oh he'll figure it out or i ain't cooking you know like how you get married like i'm still out here single like and you and i'm doing all the stuff and you ain't even doing it like what is going on but i look at that like um i'm like okay maybe they got married too young or maybe they didn't have a good example of what a marriage looked like, you know, because I feel like some people just get into marriage and they feel like it's like, it's a trend, too. Like, okay, people are getting married and it's what I'm supposed to do or whatever. So yeah. they don't go into it for the, for the right reason. So they don't really know. They're not prepared. They don't even know how to be in it to begin with. Yeah, and I'm not going to go into it, but um, even when we got married uh, young, I think it was some of those issues that you're talking about. But... Um, the key is just making your way through it and growing from mm -hmm. it. Um, if you don't grow from those experiences, then you shouldn't be in that position. I exactly. mean, marriage is not for everybody. And just because mm -hmm. you're married don't necessarily mean that you have to be forever. If things just not working, I understand trying to work uh, through things and, you know, work through it together and make things better. But if it ain't meant to be, it's not meant to be. Because yeah. period. Well, well, yeah. yeah. And statistically, we weren't supposed to make it getting married at 20. It's just that we were young, we were inexperienced, we don't know what a marriage is. And I don't think that either one of us knew how committed we needed to be in a marriage when we got into the marriage. You know, That's so me. I think both of us had to learn what marriage is while yeah. we're in a marriage exactly. instead of learning harder. before you got mm -hmm. married. Mm -hmm. So we hit a lot of road bumps and a lot of issues and, you know, a lot of back and forth because we were both still very young. We were both still young, uh, learning. 
and raising a child. Well, but yeah, yeah. I, I think that you uh, may have had a little bit more experience of what it looks like because you had married parents. Mm -hmm. So you you not necessarily paying attention. You will. Mm -hmm. You may think you're not paying attention, but they're there. They've been they've been there forever since you. Uh, yeah. Growing up your whole life, I didn't have that. I was either with my mom or my dad, mm -hmm. so I didn't know what marriage looked like. My grandma wasn't married um, when I moved with her. Um, my dad eventually got married to his girlfriend after like 17, 18 that years, and then we, that yeah. marriage didn't even last. So I didn't have that um, somebody that I exactly. can look at to mm -hmm. see uh, what it should be. So. You just had to make it work. So what do you think has helped you through the years like of getting to where you are? Because I feel like you're a great husband. I think you, it's... You are so, a great husband. To have that background. Yeah. I don't know. I think it's my mindset and just have that passion to um, try to satisfy. Um, mm. Because... Pass the offering on I'd that. I probably do just about <laughs> anything um, besides something that's real dangerous, but um, I probably dabble, but I wouldn't go that far. Um, so I just think that because I feel that I need to do whatever I need to do to make sure you're satisfied and whatever it is that you need to be done is what. helps me keep uh, pushing because the the phrase happy wife, happy life is is real and not saying that the man shouldn't be happy as well but um, you know, just want to push forward. Yeah. But like that's a common oh I'll let you go. I'll let you go. Oh, I'm sorry. No, I think that his entire life, like even since I met him he refused to be a product of his environment and what he was born into. Mm -hmm. um, so I think that determination alone made him into the person he is. Like, regardless of if we met as a teenager, I still think he would be the person that he is because of his drive and commitment to be something better mm -hmm. than what he's been around and has been shown his entire life. Yeah. But I was going to say that what he said has been a common theme, like, through the season of just having a heart of servitude. Like, that's the key in relationships. It's like, what can I do to make you happy? And as long as both of y'all have that mindset, like, it literally can work. Like, because if we're both focused on making each other happy, then how are we not happy? Mm -hmm. <laughs> like, how is anybody unhappy when that's our focus? You know, so, like, one... Um, one um, couple said they wake up in the morning and they literally ask each other, what can I do to serve you today? Like, oh my God, that's beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> it's like y'all think of this thing. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so. And, uh, <laughs> sometimes we be on point. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think they just turn and just say, no, no, no. no. <laughs> I don't know who they were. I'm, I'm just, I like this one because you kind of touched on this a little bit, so I'm gonna just ask you a question so we can get a little deeper. So, how would you describe your family dynamics growing up, and how much of a difference does does it or did it make in how you're handling your relationship? My family dynamic. Um, well, I want to start off by saying not everything because nobody can say everything, but most things coming up, if I want it. I need to go get it. So that's just, I, it's something that is one of my flaws um, because my pride doesn't always allow me to ask for things mm -hmm. regardless. And I think that has to do with my bringing up because a lot of things that I wanted, I had to go and get myself. Um, I didn't have someone to be able to pay for me to go to college, and I knew I didn't want to come out of college with a bunch of student loans, so I joined the military. Mm -hmm. um, all the schooling I did was free at that point. Well, not free, but practically free. Mm -hmm. When I graduated with my degrees, I literally had maybe $3,000 worth of student loans. Mm -hmm. That's it. 
um, my growing up, I can't say, well, it, it does play a big part in who I am today um, because I knew what I didn't want. Um, when yeah. I lived on the west side uh, in the projects with my mom and all my brothers and stuff like that, um, it was just trouble. Um, all of them been in prison. Um, I'm the only one that never been because I had decided that I didn't want to go that road. Mm -hmm. um, Are you the youngest? No, I'm the second oldest. Okay. Um, when I moved with my grandma and my dad, um, it was, I would say, a lot more structure, uh, but I had all the game bangers on that side too, so <laughs> it's still not the way that I wanted to go. Mm -hmm. um, even though wherever I look is, is game bang. Everybody in the damn family is practically game bang except me, because mm -hmm. that's just not, not what I wanted. Mm -hmm. So as far as my coming up and my family dynamic, I just seen stuff that I didn't want to be, which made me take a different route to make myself better. Yeah. I don't have a story at all. <laughs> um, I, I came up in a two-family household. Uh, I am a first-generation student, so I'm only the rebel in the family that way. Like, I knew I just... You know, out of high school, I was told to work, work, work. And I'm like, no, because everybody I know have huge careers. And all the people that have huge careers that I want to be have degrees. And I'm like, I'm going to school because I want those degrees. Mm -hmm. So that was my push. Um, my parents didn't go to college. So I really didn't have, I have a cousin that went, I don't think she's at her either master's or doctorate's now. Um, and she was my influence to go to school and make sure I keep striving for that excellence. But nope, my story is not his at all. Yeah. <laughs> so did y'all like the way that y'all grew up, like, um, how did well how would you say that it impacted you in your relationship? Um, it does. I I believe, like he mentioned earlier, uh seeing my family together, seeing my mother and father together all the time. Um, I had that example to say that's what I wanted to see in my life. Because your parents are still married. Mm -hmm. How long have your parents been married? I don't know. Let me see. I don't know. They just celebrated their anniversary, too. It has to be 40-something. It has to be. Do you feel like <clears throat> the, them being together so long is... Um, one a reason why you're you like you'll basically you feel like you'll stay married at just as long um, because of that not saying that you want to give up on your marriage and i'm saying like but do you feel like that's impacted you like and why you'll hold on to marriage and why you value marriage <clears throat> no i would assume so i would assume that example is what i would look for when looking for a spouse and one saying if you're going to spend the rest of your life with somebody that really means the rest of your life yeah it doesn't mean until you get an attitude mm -hmm. so um i don't want to minimize the impact that they had on me but i think it was more of a subconscious impact than the than one that you took note and like oh okay right. mommy and daddy are together all the time mm -hmm. i didn't know no, nothing else yeah. you know so that was my normal i didn't mm -hmm. know you know there was other families that had separate moms and separate dads that I knew of growing up, that just wasn't my reality. Yeah. So, you know, their stuff wasn't what I had to go home to every day. So, I think of, I really believe it definitely had an impact on me. I just don't know how impactful it was because I think it was more subconscious. Okay. If that makes sense. If I yeah. can tell you. Yeah. That makes sense. You got something you want to add, Harry? You look like you just did. Um, <laughs> I mean, so... I don't know where it come from um, because I can't say it really come from my family. Well, okay, so when I was small or when I was younger, um, it was my mom and my stepdad. 
uh, in the house. So it was a man there, mm -hmm. um, but there's a lot of issues that was there with him and my mom and stuff like that, and you know, just stuff that I know that I didn't. Um, when I moved with my grandma, um, at the time, I can't really say that was a one-parent household either because it was my dad and practically my grandma was my mom. Right. Um, I was the golden child. Um, there's nothing that I could ever want for that I didn't have um, because that's just, my grandma knew my upbringing from the time before I started living with her was not great. So she wanted to try and make it a lot better so that as I'm growing up, I can start seeing things better. Mm -hmm. um, but my mindset um, is that I'm gonna always um, be there for my family. Um, I'm very family oriented. Um, and that's not just the the, the blood family, so this well no, because it's all blood family. But that's not to say my cousins, my uncles, and stuff like that. But my whole family, um, I believe in being there, especially for your spouse and your kids. Um, to me, um, it's really not an option. Um, it's an option, um, but if you have that mindset that it's not an option, I think you are more likely to try and work things out than just try to pick up and leave. Um, and that's just been my whole mindset. My mindset coming up was whoever I decide to have kids with, that's the person that I'm going to be with. Um, even during the period where we wasn't buying them, I knew what I wanted. And to this day, she'll tell you she think I tricked her back into that getting back together, but I knew what I wanted mm -hmm. and where I wanted to be. <laughs> So it was and up to like, me we don't be to that. make that happen. So. <laughs> it's a story there. there look, and I, I was playing it in my head. Yeah, and now y'all knew about it. Y'all was all at school together. So. <laughs> <laughs> it was like, wait, what? Right. <laughs> yeah, y'all, I'm married. <laughs> we in hell? You got a kid? Ain't know nothing about this girl. <laughs> this is a secret woman. Okay. Secure woman. <laughs> so, but I just, I don't feel like. Cause y'all been together so long, I don't feel like this is appropriate. Um, <laughs> Cause y'all didn't really have a past before y'all met. Because <laughs> y'all was kids. Y'all yeah, 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 were kids. Right. So, um, what advice would you give on maintaining physical intimacy in a marriage? Just do it. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Period. <laughs> Even when you don't want to. <laughs> Like 
that's from a woman's perspective. Um, I always want it, so there's no time that I don't. Um, Mad. <laughs> Sad. It's just, it's, 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 right. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's just sometimes. It's just, in fact, I mean, I don't know if it's just that time of life. Yeah. It's three a.m. You know, six a.m. Whatever. But um, I think so. We've had a conversation before, and um, I did tell you that. Um, you laugh. I don't care. Okay. And we on here? Thanks for the here. Um, so it was a time where, like I said, I always wanted. Mm -hmm. And I don't know the reason that you didn't, um, but we had a conversation and we laid down some, some ground rules, you know? Um, and one of those biggest things were, um, because I always wanted, and I don't want to, I don't want to try something and then be pushed off because um, now it feels that there's an issue because now I feel rejected. Mm -hmm. So one of the things that I brought up was, you know, um, if you don't want to, don't come to the bed with no drama. Simple as that. Period. I mean, let me know that this the, the store is closed. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, That's a good point there. It's just... If it ain't nothing there, it's open. <laughs> That's a good one. Hello. So, welcome. That's what she said. Welcome to the wonderful world. Uh, and and yes. I think that's important, though, to uh, so that because you hear a lot of stories about um, people saying, you know, I got a headache. They making up excuses to not do it. But for that person that want to do it and get rejected, that's that's not a good thing because. Yeah. That can lead to other things as well if they feel like they're not on it. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, we have talked about that in depth. Uh, and when we were going to counseling, I think brought it out the most. Mm -hmm. And to the point where we, I think we set up a schedule or tried to. She said we should. Do it. I don't know she if said we it should be Wednesday. It should be Wednesday. <laughs> I think she said to just to start off set up a schedule. But yeah, she did schedule. It wasn't it wasn't I don't know if you want to go there, but we talked about that. Yeah, I mean <laughs> we talked yeah. about why and and what happened during that time. But we're not in that state no more. Right. Okay. That's good. I'm glad y'all came past it. <laughs> Literally. I'm glad y'all came past it. Y'all heard y'all got that point intended. <laughs> Do opposites attract? Well, apparently. A lot of opposites, yeah. <laughs> we are very opposite. Yeah. Very. What, what drew y'all together? The opposites? It's just opposite-ness? Opposite-ness? No, it's, <laughs> you know what? I don't know. Because we talked about that in counseling, too. It's a weird story. Yeah, it is. Like, when we met, she was a tomboy. Mm. Like, I don't, so I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> she even will tell you like I don't know why you like me. <laughs> I, didn't know. So, I always wore baggy clothes, played basketball, and everything. Like, dang, yeah. Yeah. Like, I mean, the was pants with the big shirts and the. Uh, pants. Girl, I was definitely uh, like <laughs> airbrush on it and all kinds of stuff. <laughs> yeah, the brat style. Mm -hmm. was, yeah, I was so. Dang, bad. I cannot see that. So it was the one thing that uh, attracted you to her to make you want to actually date her. In that time, um, I can't say it. Uh, no, uh, I don't know. Um, it just happened. It just happened. Yeah, and even through the times where we it was like, I dare y'all to kiss. Even the time when Something. we wasn't married, you know, um, it's it's just a lot that went on, and I think that whatever it was, whether it was fate or whatever. It just brought us together because mm -hmm. um, Zaire was born in 06 and we had rekindled in 04. <laughs> That's the story you about to tell? <laughs> no, I'm just saying. Oh, okay. <laughs> because I had a home girlfriend. Home wrecker. 
In regards to love. In regards to love, um, it all goes back to if you're willing to make that commitment to be with that person for the rest of your life. And when you say the rest of your life, really mean the rest of your life. And don't be so fast to give up on what you committed to because that was your committed commitment. So just like you will restart a diet every two weeks because you have messed up, that's how you need to look at your marriage. Like, all right, we messed up, but we go start it over again. We go try to get this thing together. This is not about like domestic violence. It's, yeah, you yeah. in that situation, that's different. But I'm talking about a healthy relationship that um, just because you got an attitude today, if you're willing to leave, then you're not ready for a relationship. Um, or if anything can spark off, uh, and that is what separates you guys, then one party or both was not ready. Mm -hmm. That's it. Um, I would say um, just always remember that love and true love is possible if you're willing to put in the work. Um, if you're going into it and you have doubts, then maybe it's not for you. If you're going into it and you say that this is what I want, this is what I'm going to commit to, and I'm going to do what I need to do to make sure it works, then that's, that's the situation that you need to be in in order to achieve that, um, that true love. Um, like she said, uh, if you're in a situation where it's like domestic violence or anything like that, fuck that. Go. Yeah. Um, some situations is not worth trying to put forth an effort to stay in um, because it's gonna, it can end up getting worse. Mm -hmm. um, you can end up losing your life. Um, so some situations is just not worth being in regardless what commitment you made to each other. That was great. Y'all did great. It's my round of applause. I mean, applause. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> you got your last words? <laughs> y'all did great. Y'all did great. Yeah. How y'all feel? Great. Y'all successfully yeah. completed an yeah. episode of Wine and Girl together. There we go. Yes. Congratulations. Are you going to come back on? Will you do this again? Do I get to choose one of my other wives to do it with? Sure. Yeah. <laughs> like yeah, sure. I don't know how it happened, but I got one, two, three, four, about four or five additional. Work. Well, I'm gonna count because she always be tripping. <laughs>
we missing somebody. Man, that's terrible. Listen, <laughs> it's not. Because I don't know why terrible. I just pull up the list. If y'all watching right now, that's your mission. It missing, is. Just we also skipped the week, y'all. So just forgive us. Yeah, but we had, Rebecca showed it was this episode seven. Who was that so Sean and Kiki. Sean and, oh my God. Oh my God. <laughs> and they did so good. Yeah, so shout out to all the lovely couples. Thank you for being here. I think Mona and Jules are only not married couple in this they were. But y'all, they did a because great job. Yeah, it was newlyweds. Yep, yeah, yeah, like, we had the newlyweds. We had yeah. the lifers. The lifers. The lifers. Yeah, so we had everything that in between. That's really how this worked out, though. Yes, it is. New so. best to start, and then y'all been in it for 24 yes. years. Mm. Wow. wow. Baby, you make that? But anyway. Pop, pop. So, coming up for Wine and Grow, y'all. So, y'all know we're going to go on a hiatus with the podcast. However, yeah. we are still dropping events in a location near you. <laughs> in the same location. At Sale Wine Bar. In <laughs> the same location y'all near you. Pull up on the kids. So, next week we got a, um, we, we had the couples all season, but we also are doing stuff for the singles. So, we've been having monthly mix and mingles for singles at SL Wine Bar. We have our next one coming up next Thursday, 7 p.m. SL Wine Bar in Lansing. And then on the 29th of June, we have a sangria and sundresses party. So ladies, grab your sundress. Men, come take a look at the ladies in their sundress. sundress. We're going to have $5 sangria. It's going to be a great time. We got some other events coming up this summer. We got an all white ladies event coming up. Block party. We, we just... We got the calendar that's full. Stay tuned. The calendar is full. Yes. Come rock with us. Because if y'all ain't been to a wine and grow event, then you definitely miss it. You missing out. So... so. Yeah, the turn up be real. Come yeah. have a good time, good vibes, good drinks, great drinks. Actually. Yes, Chris is on the mix, and yeah. Mm-hmm. All right, till next time, y'all. Toodles, deuces. Cheers to our finale, friend. I got a squeak. We oh, did it. Yes. Yes. I would do it again. You gonna say that as we end? <laughs> great job.